him. Mm -hmm. Benjamin, two ex Goodman knew him. And none of us, either none of us were called. And when they called me, Assistant District Attorney Stern, he said, can you prove that Thomas Johnson was not in the Audubon ballroom? And I said, you can't prove a negative. How you gonna prove a negative? The only way I can prove he was not there is for me to have been with him someplace else. Mm -hmm. But since I was in the Audubon ballroom, I can't prove that somebody was not in the Audubon ballroom. I said, and that's not a way that you question anybody. Mm -hmm. There was at least 50 people in the Audubon ballroom who knew Thomas, and if the police had asked each one of those people was Thomas in the Audubon ballroom and everyone said no, then we would have to reach a conclusion that there was no evidence that Thomas was in the Audubon ballroom. Mm -hmm. And if he was in the Audubon ballroom, why did they wait five days after Brother Malcolm was executed before they picked him up, knowing that there was enmity going on between both groups? I would say that there is more evidence mm -hmm. that the police and the Federal Bureau of Investigation acted prior to, as accessories to the execution, than anything to, to, to uh, pin it, as they say, on him, because he was not there. But police were there, and in the... Uh, what the video we were just talking about? Jack Baxter's yeah, brother, uh, minister. brother minister, he said... Fox of the FBI said that we were not directly involved in the execution of Malcolm X. Well, if they were not directly involved, that does not exclude the fact that they were indirectly involved. Mm -hmm. And J. Edgar Hoover sent letters to Mr. Muhammad as though they came from Malcolm and told his FBI agents, make sure you mail them from places so they can't trace them back to us and don't put this down on a letterhead memorandum. I have copies of it. Then there, the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, wrote to the New York City Police Department and said, we have evidence that someone from the Boston Mosque, and they named the person, is in hiding in uh, Florida where he was apparently wounded in the killing of Malcolm Little. That, that's J. Edgar Hoover. I got copies of it. I got a con There's a contradiction there because... They specifically told me that the guy they put in the police car was, because I had got kind of big then. I yeah. was taking 12 aspirins a day. Yeah. I was fighting that room man going mm -hmm. through and They said he was big and light skinned. Let me ask you a question. What is light skin? My wife and myself, my wife thinks she's darker than I am, and I think I'm darker than she is. Yeah. That's, what did Mr. Muhammad say? Give your answer. In figures only. Oh, okay. You don't say she was short. You say she was five, three and a half, five, four. He was six, two, six, two and a half. So you have all kinds of different. Uh, at this, at this thing, two sisters get in an argument as to who took Attila and Betty home. They don't remember. And, and you see, we, we use these vague terms. I'm not arguing with you. No, no. What is light skin to you could be dark skin to somebody else. Mm -hmm. What was Walter White? Was he light skin? He was light skin. Mm -hmm. But then when you get to uh, the other guy that took his place, uh, uh, that the boys were supposed to kill. Uh, what was that? The, the next the next president of the NAACP, he was the only one that had any color in his skin. Uh, Roy Wilkins. What was Roy Wilkins? Light skin or dark skin? What was Martin Luther King? Light skin or dark skin? Depends on who's talking about it. You understand that? Listen, I do with his departure. You see her shade? Mm -hmm. yeah. You see his shade? Yeah. Well, I'm lighter than him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's relative. Right, but see, but when, the reason why I know it's true is because the way they searched me and took pictures of me, they was looking for the bullet holes in a guy that fit my... Me. Brother, let me blow your bubble. Blow it. They knew damn well that you didn't have anything to do with it from the oh, Gideon. I know that. Well then, they was going through their Mickey Mouse game. They know you you was exonerated of the of the charge that they said th th that made you involved in it. Why did they wait for five days? It was more than that. Mm -hmm. 13 okay, 13 days. Why didn't somebody say it was Thomas? Mm -hmm. That's my point. So they gonna find a bullet hole in you 13 days later? No, th this whole, I wish I had brought this thing. There's a man named Jim Douglas, mm -hmm. and he said that the New York City Police Department tried to hire the Gambino family to kill Malcolm. I, 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 pick the 
thing up this morning, but I didn't bring it with me. When, 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 uh, the guy that was the agent, the police, we knew he was a police. He's from Manassas, Virginia. We knew he was some kind of security agency. He said he was given artificial respiration to Brother Malcolm, and one of, the, one of his bossy supervisors said, what'd you do that for? They wanted Malcolm dead. Didn't they break into Malcolm's house when he was living in, in uh, St. Albans and shoot the place up and have to settle out of court for it? Huh? Yeah. Looking for somebody that d didn't exist? Then, uh... Oh, they're very good, man. They, it's just, they, they, the the whole book. thing is Mickey Mouse. Uh, if there was... I'm going to tell you something. If I thought that he had anything to do with it, I'd tell him to his face and I'd tell you to your face. Mm -hmm. The police knew this. Mm -hmm. They knew this. Sure they knew. This was a counter-espionage set up between the Bureau of Special Services of the New York City Police Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Why? Do you know that Malcolm was going to the Bandung Conference in March? Do you know that he met with Che Guevara December the 13th, 1964? Do you know that he was armed, that Ruben was armed, and the brothers were walking around in M1 carbines? And when people said, why should they do that? I said that a well-regulated well militia is necessary to the security of free states or the right of the people to keep arms shall not be infringed. And I said, they can't do nothing to you about it. He said, well, what about the Sullivan Law? I said, that's a concealed weapon. And even now, the Sullivan Law is being challenged in the Supreme Court this year. The Constitution of the United States says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And right after the Reconstruction in the United States, the Negroes armed themselves and none of us got lynched. Well, but they was, took off. That was the way you knew so. The red shirts. Yeah. Took the weapons from us and then he started killing them. This whole business about the... Uh, let me shut up. <laughs> You see, this 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 man. I want to tell you, this man was very thorough, man. Matter of fact, I was I was more so subordinate. He was he outranked me, mm -hmm. and the reason why you hear him talking, right? Malcolm mm -hmm. said, "I'll tell Negroes not to join the army." I said, "You can't do that, brother." And they got me as disrespecting Malcolm. I said, "You can't do that," but he had his back to me. They said, "Yeah, I'll tell these Negroes." All that. I said, "You can't do that, brother." So he turned around and he said, why? I said, that's sedition. You cannot go tell no Negroes don't join the army. So he said, well, I'll tell them. He said, what can I do? I said, go against the no-knock law. Governor Rockefeller came out and said he was going to have pass a no-knock law where they can just break in your house without knocking. And I said, go against the no-lock law. And he said, why? And I said, no warrant shall issue except upon probable cause duly describing the premises to be searched or the articles or persons to be seized. That's the Constitution of the United States. Mm -hmm. He said, oh. He said, because I tell them Negroes arm themselves. I said, you can do that. Mm -hmm. He said, how? And I said, a well-regulated militia be unnecessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep them bear arms shall not be infringed. That's the Constitution of the United States. And why do you think the National Rifle Association got one of the strongest, strongest lobbies in the United States? Mm -hmm. These people that Columbine and all that mm -hmm. go around killing mm -hmm. people, they ain't stop nobody from buying rifles, have they? Yeah, okay. Good. Thank you, because this is the Constitution. So, uh, and Police Commissioner Kelly, mm -hmm. I think, he said, we're not going to have people going around here arming themselves. So Malcolm was the wild card. He, to be, this is a terrible thing to say, but he almost forced them to kill him. He said, can't let this man live. There's another line from um, Julius Caesar. So many things the great poet saw. He said, it is the bright day that brings forth the adder, the poisonous snake. He says, it's a sunny day to make the poisonous snake come out. He said, and that craves wary walking, so you have to be careful where you walk. He said, therefore, when you find an adder's egg, you squash it, kill it before it hatch, lest it get out and do some mischief. And Malcolm had been studied. They got more, they got a, they got more files on Malcolm than they have on Mr. Muhammad. Now, we, we have a minute left. Would you say that you've said everything I think so. I would say that nobody who knew Brother Thomas was called to testify. 
and those people who knew Brother Thomas and 